Let's show an example of scripting here and how we, we can set up an additional stinger. As we were talking about before, vMix gives you two stingers. Um, so let's set up our script here. So scripts are really great tools to let you tie a lot of sh uh, shortcut functions at the same time. And you also get the ability to pause for amounts of time that you might need to. Um, so you can really time them with video clips, stuff like that. You could get very, very specific. Um, and it's a really great tool that you can use. And then you can set it on a button on Stream Deck, which I'll show you how to do with vMix. We'll do a script and then a shortcut for the script. Um, and then we'll see how that all works together. So um, what Perry's question before was, how do we add a third stinger? So we'll just pretend that we already have two stingers in there um, that work the way we want them to. I'm just gonna go grab this. Um, this is a Ready Take Live stinger that we used. Um, actually, I don't think it ever made it to production, so that, so that looks unfamiliar to me. But I think that'll be a good example for us to use. Um, so first, we're just gonna wanna scrub through here and see um, when we have it over, when it covers the frame completely, because that's gonna wanna be our cut point. So I'm just gonna bring this in on an overlay here and try to find out um, what that is. I'm just gonna scrub it over here. Wow, so it looks like it never actually cuts. Um, but you know what, I think Oh, so oh, there's like a one. That that's enough. It's like most of the frame, so you won't really see it. So it's like right here. Um, um, so if it was a T a, a C image sequence, these will show actual frame numbers, which make it a little bit easier. But we're gonna have to kind of guess for now. Um, so just to save us a little time here, I'm just gonna do it like a normal stinger to kind of see where the cut point wants to be, because this will be faster than the. Um, stinger here. So I'm going to guess like 1800. Um, and then the duration is 2000. So I'm just going to go, here's my A, and then here's B. So I'm then I'm going to hit stinger. Wrong one. Oh, I never said it, so be the ready to live. Okay, this is. Okay. So now let's try stinging it. Okay, a little late, so I just need to add a little less time. So let's make it, um, let's try that. Very close. Um, let's try 14. Yeah, it seems about right. It's close, good enough for government work, I'd say. It's not perfect, but I think it's pretty close. Um, cool. So I'm going to pause that there. Um, and oh, I'm going to turn off the audio from this guy. Cool. So let's look at the scripting. So if you go into settings and scripting here, I'm going to add a script. Um, you'll see on the bottom here, you can import and export scripts that you make. They're just text files, um, but that's a good way to back up all your scripts on the text file to then uh, bring in later. Um, we're going to call this stinger three, uh, cause that's kind of what we'll be using it for. So the one drawback just to think about here before we set this up is we are going to be basically playing the stinger in an overlay. Then we're going to be cutting under the overlay. Um, so what that means is we lose the ability to use other things. We could use it for other things, but we just got to make sure we don't have anything in that overlay because it will get cut out um, once it tries to go in it. Because actually, that brings up a very po good point about um, overlay the downstream key overlays that I should bring up. So like if you had an input here that you wanted to pop in an overlay, I could hit one here. And you see it's like a nice fade. Um, but if I wanted to bring something else to go in its place and I hit one here, it doesn't do a crossfade. It just cuts the first thing out, then fades the second thing out. Watch what happens. See, it just cuts it out. So, you, so we see what's under it for just a second and then it goes away. So um, something to be aware of, it's like kind of that, it looks a little bit cleaner to, you know, bring it in, um, bring something in, then bring it out before you bring in the next thing over, go direct back to back to something. So. Just a small tidbit for overlays there. Um, let me get that out of there. All 
Okay. Okay, so now we're back here in our script. Um, let's call it Stinger 3 again, because it didn't save. I'm just gonna hit save to start off with. So now here's how we write a script. So we're gonna want it to play in an overlay, and then we're gonna want a cut to happen after a certain amount of time. So uh, to do this, let's do the Stinger in the overlay part first. So I'm gonna go function equals, and then we type what the function is. So this is gonna be overlay four in, let's say. Um, and then now we wanna give it an input. So I hit ampersand. And now this is where I put the input name with an input equals. So you can use the number of an input or the name of an input. What's really important about the name is you can't have any non-alphanumeric characters. So I'm just gonna hit save on this real quick, go back to this asset here. I'm just gonna name it something simple, just like Stinger. Um, because this, it won't work because there were spaces in the old title. So something to be aware of um, when you're making scripts. So I'm gonna come over here back to edit the script and I call that stinger. So I'm just gonna call it that this. I can just put the number 18, but then again, that'll just take whatever input ends up in 18 when we shuffle things around. Very easy to break. So I'm not gonna do that. Um, so now I'm gonna hit enter. And then now I want it to pause for um, uh, wherever we landed at, like 1400 milliseconds. Um, so then we could perform the cut. So I'm gonna say sleep 1400 right here. That's basically just means pause. And now at that point, I want to um, equals um, cut and input equals zero. Zero refers to preview, negative one. If I made this negative one, that would be program. Um, so because we want preview, I'm just gonna hit zero there. And then I'm gonna hit, then that's gonna finish. So then there was about 600 milliseconds left on that transition. And just to clean it up, um, because even if something finishes playing, especially if it ends on alpha, it doesn't leave the overlay channel unless we tell it to. So I'm just gonna wanna script that in there so then that way we keep that overlay channel clear and we're not using it. So now I'm just gonna say overlay. Oh, sorry, I forgot a piece here. So I need to say overlay input. Um, that wasn't gonna work if I tried that before. So let me fix that. Um, overlay input four. Now I'm gonna say out. So there's out and off. Off is just a cut. It'll just like clear it, like kind of like an emergency thing. Off will perform the transition that's assigned to it in the overlay menu in the bottom right. Um, so I'm gonna hit save here. So this needs to be function equals, and then the sleep here is gonna just finish that out. Um, I'm actually just gonna give it a little bit of extra time just so I'm not jumping it. So I'm gonna save this. So now let's try it. So I could preview it before I make a shortcut for it. I could preview it. Um, by here, clicking start. And that's, that pretty much did the trick. Um, so you could see it while it's running, um, you saw it say running, and then um, when it was stopped, it was stopped. So now, now it doesn't matter what I have in preview program, I'll just be able to hit this script to perform that same, it, but virtually it looks exactly the same way as another Stinger input. However, it's just happening in, um, in an overlay channel instead. And then I'm just gonna wanna make sure that that overlay channel that we decided to put the stinger in for is instead of a fade, a cut. So then it's exactly like what a stinger does. Um, so now let's go back to settings. Uh, scripting. This guy, now hit start. So a little bit off, but we get the point here. I would just go in and tweak this a little bit. And um, something to know are these are additives. So if like, because I think it was a little early, you know, let's make this like 1450. Something like that. So, but now because I added time, I could decrease time here um, because it, it all stacks on top of each other. They don't overlap, the, the sleeps don't overlap. So um, if I need to do like a segmented sleep, kind of like I have here, I just, if I adjust one side, I have to adjust the other. So then the timing still equates to two seconds. Um, so, I'm, or sorry, this is uh, two seconds, 100 milliseconds, um, or 50 milliseconds. So I'm gonna hit save. Um, now let's run that again, because they changed the timing on it a little. 
And there we go, that's pretty, it's not perfect, but it's pretty close for at least a demo purpose. So now we're not gonna wanna have to open up this window to run this script, whatever, um, whenever we want to. So I'm gonna set up this stream deck that I have here um, with that. So in order to do that, we need to do a couple things. So first uh, I have stream deck software on here. I'm just gonna open this here. And then I'm gonna make a button. So over on this side, we could see all the different functions that we could put on a Stream Deck, um, but we don't see vMix right now. So I have to go to more actions, then search here for vMix. It's like their store and install it. And that's that. So now I'm going to go here um, to pick a button and I'm going to drag a vMix shortcut on it, onto it. I didn't necessarily need to click a button before I did it, I could just drag them pretty indiscriminately. Um, but this is gonna be the shortcut we want to assign for that, so I'm just gonna give this a title, Stinger 3. Cool, and then what's cool is I can, you know, um, add some enters so we could see it, you know, center it up, change the font, stuff like that. Um, so now it's, uh, it, you guys probably can't see that there, but my Stream Deck looks exactly like it does in the software here. So I have Stinger number three there. Now I just need to link it up to the shortcut. So I'm gonna X this out. And now let's go over to shortcuts, hit add. Um, where key control is, I'm gonna hit find and then I'm gonna press on the button here. You'll see it shows up as this Stream Deck number. Uh, you could hit okay. Then function, we're gonna wanna go to scripting and picked script start. And then we just are gonna call it our script name, which is Stinger3. Um, casing is important. I'm gonna hit okay, but then just confirm the casing on that. Okay, I did have a capital S, so I'm just gonna go back to the shortcut, hit edit, and then hit capital S, Stinger3. Um, then we wanna title it um, because it'll keep this screen where all the shortcuts are a little bit more organized and you could add a description if you want to. Over here on display, um, depending on the type of shortcut it is, um, you could display different data on the Stream Deck, which is pretty cool. Um, like I could decide to pick like a color or a thumbnail or something like that. We're actually gonna put an activator on it so we could show you what that looks like. Um, uh, but that, that'll do there. We had two T's in this. Okay. So let's hit okay there. And now I should be able to hit this button and then that pops off the stinger, just like that. So now let's say, um, sometimes we'll do stream deck buttons for something in an overlay. So we wanna know, be able to visually confirm when it's hot or when it's in a current state or something like that. Um, so let's say we wanted to know when the stinger was running. So I'm just gonna go to settings here, then activators and then add um, I'm gonna find that same button that I did before. And the event, I wanna say overlay four, and then pick the input that we made the, uh, the uh, ready take live stinger. So I'm just gonna grab the stinger here. Um, so now we're basically saying we wanna activate this key, which we'll set up in a sec, whenever a stinger is in overlay four, which is what happens when you run the script. So now the type, I'm just gonna make this a stream deck. Um, and then I'm gonna pick what color I want for it. So let's say red, then hit okay. Uh, actually, before I hit okay, you'll notice this says local, this preset only. This applies for activators and shortcuts. So we notice that like, as we keep adding shortcuts, they're universal. So if I open up a brand new show file, they would remember the last set of shortcuts that were on there that were set to be universal. Um, but if you had shortcuts that you're like, oh, this only really applies to this one show, you could just hit local, this preset only every single time. And that'll only happen when you open up this vMix save file. It won't um, be, it'll um, not show up if you open up a new vMix save file. Typically I just make them all universal because they're pretty easy to turn off in that way. Um, it might be faster for me to resource something that I did for something else because I already figured out what shortcut I needed and the timing and stuff. Um, so I'll make them universal because at least I have it there. But that list can get pretty long so um, if, if you have a show you know you're gonna do a lot of stuff on you couldn't like kind of start from scratch and um, uh, make your shortcuts just on that preset so I'm gonna hit okay here and so now on my stream deck um, you'll notice here that there is a it's black instead of the vmix logo and now when I run the trigger as the stinger is running it turns red and then it goes away when it turns off so so I get the button here turns red for a sec and then goes away so 
that's a pretty much a quick example. There are like hundreds of shortcuts that you could do in vMix. So you could pretty much run a whole show off of a stream deck. They're pretty awesome. I recommend them using them for everything pretty much. Um, so yeah, that is setting up a shortcut and setting up a script and all of that stuff. I, I kind of got lucky that I happen to remember the syntax for it, but in case what I'll normally do, especially if I have to do something complicated, um, if you just go to the vMix user guide, um, you could find the list, the syntax for all the shortcuts, so you know what to type in the script. Um, so that is like, do, do, do. Um, actually, no, I'm going to go to the website version of the PDF. So let's go to scripting and automation. Web scripting, vMix Web API, um, shortcut function reference. So this is a good list. So when you're trying to make some scripts and stuff, you could just go over here to see the name of it, um, what it's going to want to be called, and then some different options that you have available for values and inputs. And basically, each of those different operators are separated by an ampersand. Oh, and something cool. We're probably going to get rid of this because it'll be out by the time anyone watches this. But in vMix 24, a feature that they're going to have is called dynamic shortcuts, which are pretty cool because right now, kind of something that's mildly annoying with shortcuts is I have to assign it to an input no matter what. So that means I can't just have one button to hit. I can't just change my mind to what input I want. I need to think of everything I might want to perform the shortcut on. So like, let's say it was a transition to, like, let's say it was a, a slide in, something simple. Um, I would have to, if I knew I had like four inputs that I would want to do this sh shortcut, I would need to make four individual shortcuts for that, find four buttons for that um, in order to do that. But like, let's say I wanted to just set up this one piece up for it, but then just change, then just like delegate which input I want the shortcut to happen to. What they're going to happen, what's going to happen in uh, vMix 24 is you're going to be able to assign this to, I think, one of four dynamic shortcuts. Um, so then you just assign it to the dynamic and then you'll have some way of assigning, oh, I want this input to be in dynamic one, this input to be in dynamic one, this one. So you just uh, delegate what's in the dynamic and then that shortcut uh, goes on that one. So that should make a lot of the vMix call stuff a little bit easier um, for when we're like trying to change video sources and audio sources. We could kind of tie things together a little bit neater. Um, so that I'm excited for vMix 24 for that. Um, so yeah, so that is um, scripting and shortcuts and activators in a nutshell.